you're going to get it? Oh, yeah, for sure. With my Chevelle, definitely. Because mm -hmm. uh, my Chevelle, I have a 1970s uh, black with the white stripes, the yeah. tuxedo Chevelle. Sure. And when I Cal was a induction? kid. What's that? You got the Cal induction yeah. on the hood? Yeah, L6. It, well, it actually is a, a 454 yep. under the hood. And uh, Calvin, Casey Calvin. Sure. Calvin, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, know Casey? Casey? Sure. He's the man. Big Viper guy. Yeah. Fucking love that dude. Yeah, yeah. He hooked up the cowl so that it, it when nice. you're, the ignition yeah, those goes Yeah, like, those vacuum yeah. hoses that get old and crack. And, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it, when I was a kid, when I was about 16 years old, one of my friends picked me up. His friend had a 1970 Chevelle and we were going somewhere. And uh, I just remember getting in the backseat of the car going, how is it possible <laughs> that this kid owns this car? Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. It was the best looking car I'd ever seen in my life. On those 70 series tires and guys used to back in the day when I, I had a 69 Olds 442 convertible. And if you didn't have the posi rear end, you'd have the one tire fryer. You know, she so do the burnout, right. and you got like one stripe going about four hundred feet down the road. Yeah, yeah. Those old cars suck to drive, though. Oh my god! If you drive the old ones that don't have resto mod components yeah, yeah. or like roaster shop components, they're yeah. just terrible. Yeah, they're so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I saw so my my wife uh, for my sixtieth last year, my sixtieth birthday. She and the kids bought me a uh, nice sixty nine Olds four four two. So it's nice enough. To where I'll drive it, but not so nice that I don't want to drive it. Right. Um, and I just, man, when I drive that thing, it's the slowest, least powerful thing in the in the fleet. But it just kind of brings me back. I got this uh, jam box I put in the backseat, the turtle box. And uh, I just turn on my ACDC and go out cruising around. And You, <laughs> you know, don't even bother just without a stereo in the world, in it. You know, if it dies at the stop sign or if it, uh, you know, we'll probably put an LT4, an LSA in it. You know, we'll LS swap it at some point. But Yeah. Do you think you'll do something to the chassis? It would probably need that, but, you know, I yeah. like a scary ride that kind of <laughs> it entertains me, you know, so uh, maybe to some degree. We, I mean, we do want to have a balanced, safe car, but, uh, you know, the old saying, Bob Lutz, who used to be the president of, of Chrysler back in the day when I first met him, he had a, he was working for BMW in Germany. He had a pretty fast motorcycle and he's out tooling around Germany and some dude just rips past him on the Autobahn. And he pulls into the gas station. It's this old guy, and Bob goes up looking at his bike. And it's like, is that a turbocharger on your bike? This dude, this is like the early seventies. And the German guy says, "Yeah, yes, young man, this it has a turbocharger." And Bob says, "Well, how much horsepower does that bike have?" He says, "Well, probably two hundred to the tire." And Bob's like, "What? Two hundred to the tire?" He's like, "Isn't that too much horse?" Bob is saying to this old German guy, "Isn't that too much horsepower?" And the old guy looks at him and says, "Young man, there's no such thing as too much horsepower." <laughs> Bob told me that story like 30 years ago. I was visiting him up in Detroit. And I think to some degree that's true. But that's a good you want to have it balanced. You want to have it safe, you know. As long as you're not there for the end. As long as you're not in the ditch. As long as you're not there for the accident. Right. The, the thing about motorcycles is the consequences are so grave. Well, sure, yeah. I've, I've had a few. I I've, I've busted up my knee and spent a week in the hospital when I was in high school. And I guess now the term they use, and it's to some degree true, donor cycle. So yeah, yeah my bi my boys all like to ride. We ride KTM. We ride dirt bikes up in Colorado in the summertime, but I'm like on the road. You got to be careful because even back in the day, if you're riding, you know, they're distracted drivers. Now everybody's on their fucking phone. Nobody's paying attention to shit. It's so bad. You know, so there's so many people that are just addicted to their phones and they can't put them down while they're driving. It's so wild to see. Yeah. I mean, every now and then I, I take a car service to the airport or something. And if you're not driving, you can just like look out the window. Just next mm. time you do that, just look out the window. More than half the people are fucking not even looking at the road. They're on their phone. Yeah. And they're supposed to be driving or they're putting on their makeup. One of the things I love about Apple CarPlay is you don't have to take your hands off of anything. Absolutely. You can just say, hey, Siri, play. Yeah. It'll play a song for you. Yep. That is the wild. Like, I do that shit with my daughter because my daughter's into like Taylor Swift and I don't sure. have any Taylor Swift on my phone. Yeah. But I could just, while we're in the car, you want to listen to something? And she brings up a song. So I just say, hey, Siri, play. And then. And bam, like that, it's yeah. playing it. I mean, CarPlay works really well. It's incredible. The tech, you, it reads your texts. Yeah. It sends text for you. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. Do you ever put CarPlay in any of your old cars? They have like retrofit kits now yeah, for that kind of stuff. I have. Um, but we, honestly, when I'm driving those old cars, I don't, I don't like to, I, sometimes I don't even like to listen to music. Yeah, I'm the same I really way. just want to hear that engine. Sure, sure. You yeah. know? I listen to the music sometimes, but I'm. All, it always gets annoying. I, I yeah. want to hear that engine. I 